some particular cases, particular solutions, or they are just <coughs> not for payments, they are for grids, for dumps, for other type of constructions. Although they are for payments, but they are not mm, as useful as we would like to have. So this is some summarized scheme of the mechanics which are <coughs> taken in the concrete in the tunnel. So we divided the problem into four parts. You can see chemo, thermo, hydro, and mechanical parts. And you can see the interrelations here also. In particular, our goal for, for this part will be the derivation of functions which are uh, offering the optimal joint type, joint cutting time, and also the joint facing time, depending on all of these parameters. Let's talk about the methodology. So how we move is first we did a literature review, then we discussed the thermal and moisture problems separately because they are uh, the most uh, <coughs> they will be the base you will see soon. And then we defined the find the method tool which we should use in order to make the calculations for thermal problem and for moisture problem. And then we go to coupling then validation and calibration of the model, then results, and then we move all these things, all these coupling models to the mechanical analysis. So here you can see some example of here you can see plain, plain concrete pavement. You can see what are the uh, environmental <coughs> factors affecting. There might be radiation, irradiation, convection by there, there might be wind, there might be uh, evaporation from surface, or there is a conduction with uh, thermal conduction with the base or subbase. So, <coughs> the first we can speak, we should speak about the effect of the temperature and moisture alleged in that concrete solution includes the early string development and long term durability, that is, to have a optimized design in order to avoid these undesirable curves. And the concrete temperature, which is developing during the first three days, uh, after placement has a bit vital impact on long-term performance, that is also for the cracking breather. And as a hydration of cement is an exothermic process, it is, there is a heat liberated due to this process. And this generation should be, should be examined. And depending on this, to optimize the chemical compound of the cement to avoid very high temperatures or to take into account the environmental factors of the place where the component is placed to make the optimal design of the chemical composition of the cement. <coughs> and the magnitude of the thermal sources will depend on the magnitude of the temperature change and concrete structures. You can see here there are two cases. This is Imagine this is a concrete slab, and here is the base or sub -base. In the first case, you can see downward cooling, curving, where the temperature in top is higher than in the bottom of the slab. This will happen mostly in the daytime, and this is upward cooling when the, there is a irradiation, and the surface is normally much uh, colder than the bottom part. And with this equation, well, this is for one day, you can calculate how the stress is appearing in some part of this pavement, which depends on the temperature change. This is the thermal expansion coefficient, the young modulus, um, resistance <coughs> of the So for development, <coughs> the development of temperatures in the concrete may be described by this uh, by Fourier law as a partial differential equation. You can see the well you should you don't have to be familiar with this equation, just I separated different parts. This is of transfer of thermal energy to the column, or this is the thermal energy generation, which I told that it is depending on the hydration and chemical composition, and this is the change in energy story. This is this is your simple. And as a part of different equation, there are some boundary conditions and initial conditions, that is initial temperature distribution, this is the when the concrete is getting this, the initial temperature of the mix, that looks, this is the exchange with the environment or to, to, with the ground. 
serious conviction, etc. And Yes, this is actually the energy rela energy released due to hydration, due to the chemical processes. So, as you can see, there are many factors affecting the thermal behavior of the concrete. So, this is the behavior of the concrete temperature after placement is quite complex, and it is affected with the temperature of the concrete place concrete or ambient temperature, solar radiation intensity, it might be depending on the clouds also, and the boundary conditions of the pavement. So another part is the humidity problem. When the production of concrete is done, there is more uh, water added than needed for hydration and workability of concrete. So this water is getting <coughs> accumulated in the surface in the surface and then it gets evaporated, which is and fast evaporation might bring to unstable parts also. So uh, for this, some curing methods are available to slow down the evaporation and diffusion of the water in the areas. So here, the mechanics of the how the water, how the cement is getting hydrated, and the type of water. So you can see in the first in the, there is degree of hydration is zero. You can see we have unhydrated cement and the water. Then by the time you can see when every, all the cement is hydrated, there are water in two types of water. The chemically bound and non-bound water. This non-bound water are these two, which might be diffused. And this is the concrete is losing this uh, humidity during the time, during all the life, because this is a very slow process. And the drying changes will occur as a result of drying of the <coughs> water from pores. Therefore, it is very important to study the accurately and accurately estimate the moisture loss. So, the factors affecting the moisture loss may be different. That it might be the ambient conditions of the surface exposed surfaces, and if they are just uh, directly exposed to the environment without any curing materials. Top surfaces will lose water faster than the bottom surfaces because the diffusion of the water in concrete is quite slow process and it is not managing to bring all the water. So the first layers will uh, lose the water and they will it might bring to cracking. Here you can see if this is the initial layer or this is not restrained. If there is a shrinkage, it is losing water, but it will shrink. If this is unrestrained from this side it will shrink and come to this size. But imagine if it is uh, present in the both side, here the intensive traces will appear, which will be higher than the top intensive tracks, and then the tension will crack. So this is just a mechanical example of how the humidity will bring to cracking. And this is the last part of my model, what I'm doing. And this is just a view of the finite element model in this is the mesh, and this is some result analysis. You can see there are like six slabs, and there are cut, cuts made, uh, cutting here, transversal, transversal and longitudinal cuts are made here. And we go detail one by one. And why, uh, what we choose uh, as a tool for our analysis, we have uh, looked for different softwares from academic to commercial, and we concluded is because of the complexity of our model that we should vary a lot of parameters and the concrete itself in early age will change all the mechanical parameters and thermal parameters and humidity parameters during the first 28 days. We used, we choose ANSYS to be our tool for, <coughs> for making the model. It is easy to model. Well, user it has two interfaces, but the it has the work, it has two parts. One is called APDL and another is workbench. So workbench is much user friendly, but it's not as flexible as APDL, so we do it in APDL. <coughs> there are a lot of literature available for learning and it is able to simulate static, dynamic and thermal programs and you can do any kind of mechanical or fluid analysis, transfer of fluid dynamic analysis, electromagnetics, etc. It is there for software. 
and also it has a post-processing tools which is made think easy to analyze the results in the software itself. This is an example of <coughs> thermal analysis. So what we do is just we find the parameters, the material, material properties, model geometry, then we put the initial temperature as a pleasant temperature and boundary condition depending on the boundary factors, <coughs> boundary condition factors. Then we get solution and for each step we solve a mechanical problem. In the similar way we do with the reality and the thermal, the humidity, the mechanical, because what is happening is in thermal analysis we don't see the values of humidity in the concrete, but in humidity when, while we do in humidity, humidity analysis then we need uh, thermal uh, analysis results from the first analysis. It is three-step analysis. So this is example of my model, one of my models I have analyzed. You can see the can describe the sizes <coughs> from propane and plant use. This is the division of the concrete pavement. This is the pavement and this is the surface. Here you can see I divide, for example, in this case, six elements. And there are six elements and seven nodes for each element. First is thermal analysis. Here you can see two cases. Here, from the depth, I have divided, I have numbered with E1 to E6 the elements, and from N1 to N7 the number of the nodes. And here you can see the average temperatures in each element, from the surface to bottom. Here, this is an example of indoor pavement, where there is no effect of the sun, there is no any environmental effect of temperature. So this might be the case of the pavement in N in the room of 0 0.7 in AV, as, you saw, as I saw, showed you the crack example. And this is for outdoor payment, it might be concrete payment, where there is a radiation and the temperature environment, uh, temp uh, environment and temperature change.